So the main idea with this design was to come up with something that's accessible to just about anyone with a 3D printer, even if the quality of the prints is not quite up to standard. So all of the components are really simple and they don't require any support material, um, which makes them really easy to print. Uh, the components that it uses are just some simple screws, some servos and an Arduino. Um, whereas some of the more advanced animatronic mechanisms use things like um, obscure hobby components that you might have to look a bit harder to find. This design on the other hand uses really easy to source parts. Um, it's also designed to use my realistic eyes that I have uh, another video about and these can just simply snap in um, as it can with all the different eye mechanisms that I've got that are interchangeable. I would say that overall this project is a good option if you want to build a functional and realistic eye mechanism but you don't necessarily have access to tools like a lathe and you can't necessarily get a hold of um, certain components very easily. So the design of this mechanism was partly inspired by a video I saw by David Sands Kerbis. The video called Dasaki Animatronic Eyes. I think it's maybe based off a mechanism that's used quite often in puppeteering because um, I think I've seen something similar elsewhere but the basic idea of it is that the X and Y mechanisms are completely separate so in my mechanism the X axis assembly is really robust with a really large range of motion my Y mechanism however has a much poorer mechanical advantage and a lesser range of motion unfortunately but I would say that if you're making a sort of simple easy to make uh, animatronic eye the sort of looking from side to side is probably going to be more important to you anyway than the looking up and down so in total my design uses six servos and um, the X and Y mechanisms have one servo each controlling both eyes uh, whereas the eyelids have a separate server for each eyelid um, I think it's totally possible that um, there could be less uh, servos used in the design but some of the other designs that I tried out sort of overcomplicated it by trying too hard to reduce the number of servos so I think six is a fairly acceptable number um, these servos SG9 is a really cheap and easy to get a hold of so I don't think it matters too much so for this project aside from 3d printing filament you also need six SG9 e servos um, which as I mentioned are really easy to get you'll need a couple of screws uh, the screws that I've used are M2 and M3 um, in a couple of different lengths. You'll need an Arduino. Um, this design was designed with uh, Arduino Uno in mind, um, but I'm pretty sure any board will work. Just as long as it has three analog inputs and an SDA SCL pins, it should be fine. Uh, you need a servo driver board, which in this project I'm using uh, Adafruit 16 channel uh, PWM driver board. Uh, which I have a link for in the description. Um, you'll need some jumper wires, a joystick, a push to make switch, um, a little 10 kilo ohm resistor and a potentiometer or variable resistor. So a quick note about the control that I'm using in the video, um, that's something that I'm going to put out a tutorial on separately um, in a few weeks, it's just not quite finished yet. That's just the potentiometer the joystick and the button all in one package um, so there's nothing wrong with having all those parts separate but the controller will be a convenient way to to use all those different things so printing uh, the printing should be fairly easy um, the majority of the parts print quickly and easily without supports um, and I also use PLA for everything I'm sure there are filaments that would work better probably ABS would be a little bit better it tends to be better for removing parts um, but there's nothing wrong at all with using PLA for this design there are a few delicate parts as well to look out for but um, if you're using decent quality filament and you're happy with your print settings then you should be fine I used a layer height of 0.2 millimeters and that was fine but I reckon you could probably get away with a layer height of 0.3 without too much trouble. There weren't too much post-processing to do either. Um, most of the parts I've used just came straight out of the printer and into the model. Um, but since everyone's 3D printer is a little bit different and I can't be certain how everyone's prints are going to come out, um, I've got a little guide to each component and the sizes of the holes you should be left with. So if you're having problems with the sizes of any of your holes, um, I recommend that you just get a little hand drill. You can get one real cheap off Amazon and just drill out all the holes to the right size according to these diagrams that I've, that I've put up. And they're also in the download um, 
which you can find in the description. You will probably want to sand the eyes and the eyelids just to make them look a bit better. Um, as I mentioned I've got a full video on how to make the eyes but the eyes and the eye adapters are really the only parts that you might need to sand. But other than that most stuff should just work straight off the printer. So once you have everything printed and you're ready to put it together, start by connecting the two bases with 10mm M3 bolts um, and this pivot point will serve as the pivot for both the Y mechanism and the eyelids and then once that's in you can put in the servo and use some M2 screws to fix it to the base and this servo serves as the actuator for the X axis motion. You then want to attach the Y axis arm to the sub base with a 5mm M3 screw and attach a servo horn on the third hole from the center using a 4mm or 6mm M2 screw. So you can then start building the x-axis assembly by screwing the fork components into the eye adapters with 5mm M3 bolts. Uh, the angle is a little bit funny on some of these but it should go in fine. Um, you then want to attach the three point connector to the top of the forks you also need to attach a servo horn on the final hole to the centre of the three point connector using another 5mm M3 bolt. You will need to drill out the hole on the servo horn just to make it accept that M3 bolt. You then want to attach the eye centre link component to the eye adapters with a 5mm M3 screw. Um, if you find that 5mm is too short it's okay to use 10mm. Try to use as small as screws as possible to, in, to try and keep the weight down. And then you can also plug in the eyes at this stage um, or you can do it later, it doesn't matter too much. So I get that maybe some of that was a little bit tricky to follow but um, if you check the diagrams you should be able to figure out fairly easily. So once you have all that together um, just give it a wiggle around and make sure it all moves okay. Screw all of this to the centre of the sub base with two 10mm M3 bolts and then start loading up the servo block with five Tower Pro SG90 servos in the orientation shown. You then want to attach the relevant eyelid arms to the eyelids with a M2 screw and also attach a servo arm to the other end on the last hole um, and again you might want to drill that the servo horn hole out to uh, between 1.5mm and 1.8 um, just for the M2 screw to be able to bite in and then you can pop the eyelids on the base but don't worry about connecting any of the servo horns yet. So then you need to wire everything up um, and you can use the diagram as shown uh, and you need to upload the code to the Arduino. You need to plug in all of the servos into the servo driver board and turn it on and what this will do is set all of the servos to their neutral position. So while it's powered on you can then just pop all of the servo horns into the servos in a position so that the eyes are sort of uh, looking forward in a neutral position and then you can turn off the power and screw in the servo horns and you can do the same for the eyelids too um, but the best way to do it would be to press the button to make it blink and then set the servo horns so that the eyes are closed evenly. So you might find that the y-axis arm in particular is a little bit tricky to get the screw in for the servo horn. Um, I actually think it doesn't matter too much about that screw because for my servos it seems to hold fine. Um, if you've got one that's a little bit loose or something um, then you'll just need to take out one of the servos that's in the way of it to be able to tighten it and then obviously put that servo back in. So you should find now that everything works. If you're having trouble some things to check might be um, just making sure that everything's able to move smoothly without much friction um, and if there is a lot of friction you might just need to sand some parts down just so that they move a little bit easier. In particular check the eyes in the eyelids and make sure that they're not interfering too much because um, that's a problem that I was having earlier on. In this design the eyelids are actually a little bit oversized so there shouldn't be too much of an interference but as I said earlier it's impossible to know how different people's printers might be slightly wrong in different ways. So I really hope that it's gone well for you and you've got a cool eye mechanism that you can be pretty happy with. This eye mechanism works great but I was also looking for something a little bit more robust and reliable and lighter um, which in the next video I'm going to show um, my more advanced eye mechanism. So I hope that you will tune in for that.
Another thing for me to mention quickly is that I have started a Patreon. Currently I try and make every project as cheaply as possible, which means recycling all of my old projects for screws and the same set of 10 MG90S servos that I got off AliExpress about three years ago. So with a little bit of support of Patreon, that should help to keep me producing these projects and keeping them open source and free. Just in case some of those servos die, I don't want it to make any sort of change to the content that I put on YouTube. But I am currently posting a few times a week on Patreon, just with updates of projects that are in progress. There will also be some other packs, such as I'm planning on sending out a sticker pack to some of the tiers, um, but any tier will be able to see all of the updates that I'm going to post on there. And as it turns out, without me even having to make a video on it, I already have one supporter, so here's a big thank you to Paul Lopes. So if you are interested in a little look behind the scenes, or you just want to help the cause, or you actually just want an extremely cool sticker pack, consider checking out the Patreon, there's a link in the description. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.